so let me take you through the session so uh, in current date i mean in current evidence a lot of research has shown that nutrition during pregnancy along with a nutrition during pregnancy and early childhood nutrition has a lot of impact on the later function and the health so uh, what they trying to say basically is here is nutrition during pregnancy not only uh, helps in the growth of the child just the growth of the child but it also has a major function in the brain growth the brain development and also it helps in the child's cognitive function cognitive function as in the intellectual and it also takes place in behavioral and the educational achievements for the child to achieve and it also plays a very important role with the immune function and it helps with the risk of allergy autoimmune diseases the bone health and lot more outcomes so this is more like a foundation which has an impact on the later stage which is why we are going to talk about the uh, the maternal nutrition or the nutrition during pregnancy this is very very important so uh, one uh, particular interest is that see uh, the interest, uh, the nutrition that you given uh, before pregnancy has a effect better when you compare with the risk of obesity or associated disorders like cardiovascular disease or diabetes or a heart stroke or uh, and heart attack so it's better to do it's better to work on the nutrition prior rather than getting a disease and working on it so which is why we have to focus on the pre conception and the nutrition and the lifestyle changes of a women who should be considered planning like a, before they are planning for pregnancy uh, we should focus on the pre conception care because this starts uh, even before the women are getting pregnant so which is why this is very important see uh, there are a lot of several factors which i am going to put you through just to make you understand that we're going to discuss about weight gain bmi uh, diet and lifestyle genetics and we're also going to discuss about body composition and what will be the outcomes so just to to you make you understand that these are the concepts that we're going to discuss so that you can understand it better now uh see there are some factors which can cause an adverse pregnancy outcome which can actually be prevented through a proper preconception care preconception care is basically before uh, women are getting pregnant so uh, you have to understand that any women any women of a reproductive age are the planning for pregnancy they should have their vaccination status for rubella and hepatitis b and also they should be in a state that the you know they should not have any complaints or they should be treating their underlying diseases such as hypothyroidism or if they are a known case of diabetes or hypertension or any any uh, diseases they should make sure that they take the adequate treatment before they get pregnant and very important point that we have to talk think about is regular exercise uh you may think why am i even talking about exercise but yes we are going to discuss in the few i mean the next uh, for the slides so a regular uh, exercise what it does is it helps to achieve a normal uh, body weight during pregnancy uh the reason is we are going to see it further as well and also you have to remember that uh, eating healthy which it will contribute to improving the maternal and the fetal health even before pregnancy actually begins so these are some of the factors which can actually be prevented so basically vaccination for rubella and hepatitis b and you have to make sure that the underlying treatments are on all under control and a regular weight for maintaining a healthy body weight and improving i mean eating a good healthy diet for improving the maternal and fetal health this will prevent adverse effects so as i already told you pre pre conception care should be an actually an essential part of primary and preventive care for all women in the child bearing age and it's very important that uh, this uh, is very important because uh, see uh, the women that who are going to go i mean who's going to, who's planning for pregnancy should receive a good counseling to promote good physical health good health and they should know that they should not smoke or cons uh, consumption of alcohol during their pregnancy and a very healthy diet pattern is recommended for the general population because pregnancy is a state where they have to meet their nutritional needs 
higher than a woman who is not pregnant so they need to understand all this so it's very good uh, of a mother who is just recently married and planning for pregnancy who can go for counseling to understand the importance of preconceptional care so as i already said uh, there are some specific nutrients and specific uh, things to be followed during pregnancy which is actually a risk factor the number one first point you have to keep in mind is uh, smoking during pregnancy or alcohol consumption are very very important because there are a lot of chances of a baby having issues uh, that is actually termed as fetal alcohol syndrome where their brain development will be retarded and they will be intellectual stunting as well which is why it is very important that smoking and alcohol consumption during pregnancy should be avoided apart from that the lot of neural tube defects this can be avoided when there is a supplementation of folic acid or the folate b vitamin folate it helps in reducing a pregnancy complication apart from that there are some studies to say that a uh, uh, folate uh, supplementation can also reduce the chances of getting cleft lip and palate and congenital anomalies as well so it is very important that uh, before conception uh, the fetal and the embryonic development should be modulated by the nutritional lifestyle choices that you have making throughout the whole course of the pregnancy so these two things one person has to keep it in mind now uh, as i already told you the smoking exercise illness and all of this will have a risk factor so now the uh, so we spoke about uh, the conception and etc now there are two things that we'll have to keep it in mind what happens if a woman who is pregnant is underweight okay underweight is basically uh, you can find out with with a body mass of body mass index of less than 18.5 is known as underweight okay so maternal underweight has a risk of adverse pregnancy outcome which will include uh, the baby is born to the mothers who are underweight will have a preterm baby preterm baby is any baby who is born before 37 weeks of gestation and they will also have a low birth rate and they also have other complications when compared to uh, pregnant women with a healthy weight also uh, men in re, uh, men of reproductive age should also be encouraged to co- consume a healthy diet it's just it's not not the maternal even the paternal diet also plays a very important role so underweight should also not be there and overweight should also not be there see in this current situation this lo- the obesity is becoming an endemic and a lot of uh, complications that's happening i mean pregnant women who are obesity are very much prevalent and that's the most complicated thing that physicians and uh, you know doctors get to see every day unfortunately people don't remember i mean people are not aware that a uh, healthy body mass index during pregnancy can affect the mother and the child as well there are a lot of complications for mothers and the kid if they are overweight or obesity which is why it is important for the mothers of uh, i mean mothers who are planning for pregnancy should be in a healthy weight which is why we are going to discuss about the bmi so a bmi is basically a weight in kilograms divided by the height in meter square this is very very important even though it cannot be like an adequate fat to find out how much of muscle or fat is there but still it helps during pregnancy uh, so basically you, we uh, it is very important that there should be lot of public health interventions to tell uh, women of reproductive age or child bearing age to have a healthy bmi between 18.5 to 24.9 uh, if it's about 25 we call it as overweight based on the asian cutoffs and if the bmi is greater than 30 we call the we call it i mean we term it as obesity by the who so body mass index is a very simple thing to find out to difference between overweight obesity or underweight so it's very important it's very important that the uh, women should be of a healthy weight 
so i i told her about what happens now let's see the complications apart from what happened so complications during pregnancy what happens if there is not a good weight gain that is if the mothers are underweight and they don't have good weight gain there are chances of baby which is born with a less birth weight less than 2.5 kg we call it as a low birth weight baby and they may be premature or a preterm less than 37 weeks and the development will not be proper and the child will have lifelong health issues and there are chances of death during uh, during the delivery that is known as the perinatal mortality and there will be problems for the baby during uh, I mean baby uh, that is the mental and the behavioral problems could be a reason when there is a too much of weight gain during pregnancy that can also cause high birth weight baby we call it as macrosomia when the baby is ex, uh, the weight is excess greater than 3.3 or something we call it as microsomia and again there is uh, dif difficult for uh, delivery and the physicians may go for a c section or a cesarean section and the mothers who have a greater bmi they have a risk of gestational diabetes for the mother and again because of a higher weight gain there are chances of uh, perinatal mortality that is uh, death of the child and also that there are a chance there are a lot of chances for the baby to develop uh, diabetes and cardiac issues in the future which is why weight gain is very very important and that is why uh, women who are pregnant should be of a healthy bmi so uh, this Uh, actually, uh, if you see, pregnancy is a very good uh, window for doing lifestyle changes because uh, if one tells them, that if, if uh, one health provider and healthcare worker tells the mother that uh, these are some of the uh, adverse effects of being underweight or overweight or obesity, they will understand that there are chances. Uh, there are they'll understand that uh, if I have a higher uh, weight. i might get a diabetes during pregnancy if i have a higher weight i may get a chances of having pre eclampsia or you can also call it as a hypertension during pregnancy so the mothers actually understand that there can be complications and they will try i mean they keep this as an opportunity to improve health and they are very much motivated once one health health worker talks about this so that they can understand that these are the changes lifestyle changes that one women has to undergo so which is why healthcare providers should provide uh, adequate tools or support for the weight loss including the information given like what i told you this will be the adverse effect and this will what happened if you follow it properly and also this is why we spoke about exercise you might have remembered i would have spoken about exercise right so that is why physical activity will uh, will uh, you know is also important ideally consultation with a nutritionist or a weight reduction specialist should be offered to all women who are actually willing to lose weight before they get pregnant in this way mothers are also encouraged to develop a healthy term uh, lifestyle uh, which helps in mothers who are healthy healthy pregnancy and thereby a healthy children will be there so which is why this is very important so uh, now we spoke about underweight we spoke about overweight now for having a normal body mass index is because as i already told you uh, having a good weight before conception and with a good lifestyle in the terms of diet and physical activity can minimize the risk of unhealthy pregnancy outcomes for both the mother and the child so another thing uh, another factor that you have to remember is during when the mother is pregnant they should not gain excess weight when compared to pre pregnancy weight it depends on the bmi whether how much they should gain so that also plays a very important role and remember just because a pregnant mother have to need i mean i told you right a pregnant pregnant mothers will need extra calories or extra uh, additional calories for their weight gain and etc it should not be interrelated with a healthy diet and insufficient physical activity even the weight gain should take place with proper diet and it should be nutritionally dense as well which we are going to see in the few the further slides